Hi, welcome to today's Making Meaning lesson. My name is Mrs. Burgess. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Broadview Thompson School. We've been using nonfiction books uh, for our lessons, and nonfiction books give true information about real people and things. We've been talking about what you're learning and wondering as you hear nonfiction books. During this lesson, you might have to turn and talk. At school, we have a turn and talk partner pretty close to us most of the time. And if you're at home today and you have a turn and talk partner at your home, you can use the language that you're the most comfortable using. If you want to, you can pretend to use a phone or pretend to call Mrs. Burgess. You could also use the teddy bear as your uh, turn and talk partner, any stuff you will do. And my favorite is to whisper to your hand if you don't have anyone nearby. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use a book today called Getting Around by Playing. So um, of course this is the cover of the book and um, if I open the cover I get to the title page and the title page tells me the title of the book and it tells me the author's name and it also will tell me who the publisher was and the publisher is the person who um, is the company that made the book. This book is called Getting Around by Plane by Cassie Mayer and Heinemann Library from Chicago, Illinois is the name of the publisher. So um, when I uh, think of a book like this, I often wanna go to the back cover. The back cover also gives us some information about what we might find in this book. It says, do you move by plane? Read this book to find out how people get around by plane. So ask yourself now, what do you think this book is about? Go ahead and turn and talk to someone right now. Yes. I heard someone say that maybe this book is going to be about people using an airplane. I also heard that um, some people know that there are different sizes of airplanes. Th those are gr great ideas. Now this is a nonfiction book about, air about planes. Nonfiction books often give us extra information so readers understand what the book is about. Over the next few weeks, we'll be learning about different ways that nonfiction books give extra information. Let's look at um, this book now. Getting Around by Plane. Getting Around by Plane, Cassie Mayer, Heinemann Library. A Table of Contents. This says contents. A Table of Contents tells us what information is in the book and where we can find the information in a book. Let's go ahead and read part of this contents page. Contents, getting around by plane, page four. What planes carry, page six. How planes fly, page eight. Working on planes, page 12. Where planes fly, page 14. That's just part of what this page contents page tells us. It tells us what information is in the book and what where we'll find it in the book. Getting around by plane. Every day people move from place to place. Some people move by plane. What planes carry? Planes carry people. Planes carry cargo. Cargo. Cargo are things that planes might carry. So what did you learn about planes from the words and the photographs? Go ahead and turn and talk to someone now. Yes, I heard someone say that planes don't only carry people, but they also carry things. Great, let's read some more. How planes fly. Planes have engines to help them fly. Planes have wings to help them fly. 
planes take off on runways. Runways are special roads at airports just for planes. Planes land on runways. Landing means that planes come down to the ground. Working on planes. Pilots fly, fly planes all over the world. So pilots are people who fly planes. Flight attendants help passengers on planes. So flight attendants are the people whose job it is to help people who ride on airplanes and passengers are people who ride on airplanes. So what did you learn so far about planes in the part I just read? Go ahead and turn and talk now. And I'll share an idea in just a minute. Yes, I heard that people work on airplanes. Pilots work on airplanes and flight attendants work on airplanes. Where planes fly. Planes fly over cities. Planes fly over the country. Planes fly over mountains. Planes land on water. Planes land on ships. Planes help fight fires. Planes take you high above the clouds, and then they take you back down again. So what did you learn about planes, where planes fly? Go ahead and turn and talk to a partner and tell them where you know planes fly. Yes, I heard someone say that planes can take you over the country and sometimes planes can even land on a ship. That, those were great ideas. That were, those were things that we did learn from this book. So let's just take a, take a minute and um, we're going to... Let's stop and talk about this book. Now, according to this book, what do planes carry? And according to this book, where do planes fly? And what else did you learn about planes in this book? Yes, I heard someone say that planes carry people and they carry cargo. I also heard someone say that where planes go might be that planes fly over cities and planes fly over the country. And what else do planes, um, what do planes do in this book? Planes can do a job like land on a ship or even help forest fires. Right, so when we were talking about this book, I was thinking at the, about the word travel. Um, and you can see in, in this picture that there's a family traveling in a car and they've got luggage on top. If you have luggage when you travel, that probably means you're going to go somewhere quite far away from your home. So in this book, we can see that um, the word travel we can think of the word travel when we think of the words that are in this book that say every day people move from place to place. Moving from place to place means that you are traveling. So, hmm, I'm just thinking about if I could travel any to any place I wanted, where would I travel and why? Hmm, if I could I would probably travel to Los Angeles. Um, I'm going to have a grandson pretty soon, and if I could go any place I would like to, 
I would want to travel to Los Angeles because I'm going to have a grandson. So I'd like you to answer the question. If I could travel to any place I wanted, I would travel to because I'm going to give you a minute and have someone share their idea where they would like to go. Great. Who would like to share using this sentence? I could travel to, if I could travel to any place I wanted, I would travel to because, oh, I heard someone say that they would like to travel to Yakima so they could see their grandma. That's great. All right. So just a reminder that if you travel, you're going to one place from one place to another, especially someplace far away. And some people travel for to see family, to see friends, for fun, and sometimes people even travel for, for work. All right. Now another word that I was thinking about as we were reading about, airpl about airplanes was the word transportation. Now transportation is a way to move people or things from one place to another. So if I'm looking at our book again, and I'm going to this page, and it says, some people move by plane. So that's one way that people use transportation, is to use an airplane. So I'm thinking for transportation, people would use, hmm, what else do people use for transportation? What other ways are there to move people or things from one place to another? So I might use the sentence, hmm, for transportation people use, yes, I heard trucks, I heard motorcycles, I heard bicycles, and let's look at the pictures on here. These are all different ways that people use transportation. I see a skateboard and as a car, a monorail, and this person is using the wagon. So let's think about it. For Mrs. Burgess, for me, my favorite um, kind of transportation is my car because it's comfortable. I like driving and I like to be a passenger too, and my car has taken me all the way to California. So you think about what your favorite kind of transportation is. Use the sentence, my favorite kind of transportation is because, and tell me why you like that kind of transportation. Oh, I hear that you like the school bus because it takes you to school every day. I heard someone say that they do like to go on an airplane because they can go a long way from home when they go on an airplane. Those are great ideas about the kinds of uh, transportation that you like. Now remember, transportation is the way we get from one place to another. Hi, now it's time to think about our independent reading today. For independent reading, you should read a nonfiction book today. A nonfiction book that tells you about real information, about real people or things. And really pay attention to the pictures and photographs. And when you're reading um, and looking at those photographs and pictures, think about what you're learning from those pictures and photographs. Think about what those pictures and photographs make you wonder. And um, ask yourself, what is surprising about these things that I'm learning from these pictures and photographs? And you will write and draw about what you thought about while you were reading today. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean. Um, I read a nonfiction book uh, called A Day in the Life of a Zookeeper, and I found a really surprising photograph, something that just made me wonder about the job of a zookeeper. And this is the picture that I'm talking about. This is a picture of a zookeeper feeding a baby mole rat, and I thought about that tiny little 
a bottle of milk that she was feeding um, the mole rat with. So this is what I did. I thought about that picture and I took the form that um, was uh, in the packet that I got at school. Um, I can also have, um, you can also have your parents um, print out the packet or you can use your own um, composition book or paper at home. Here's what I did. I needed to write down the title of the book, which was A Day in the Life of a Zookeeper. And it says here, uh, read or listen to a nonfiction book. Think about the pictures and photographs. Write and draw about one of the questions below. What did you learn? What did you wonder? And what was surprising to you? Talk to someone about your work when you're done. Here's my picture. It's a picture of the zookeeper feeding the baby mole rat with that teeny, teeny bottle of milk. Here's my sentence. I was surprised that a zookeeper fed a baby mole rat with such a tiny bottle. That was really surprising to me. I did not know that a zookeeper could feed an animal with such a tiny bottle. Now, if you do not have a nonfiction book at your house, you can always go to the Seattle Public Schools website. You could go to seattleschools.org, select the student portal, and click on academic tools. You might book, get a book from the Tumble Books Library or to Pebble Go. You can also visit Scholastic Learn at Home, at home for any nonfiction books that you can use for this assignment. So, don't forget, you need to read a nonfiction book. You need to wonder about what the pictures and photographs are teaching you. You want to think about what you're learning from those pictures and photographs. You're going to wonder about what is surprising about what you're learning from those pictures and photographs. Draw and write about it. We'll see you next time. Thank you.